Hello everybody. So here is here is the first video about uh, the object I developed for PewData, which is called uh, Sec dot list. It's a uh, I would say an intelligent sequencer, which can be really useful to compose music. So first first thing you need to to do is to download it. In uh, there will be a link in the video description and. Uh, once it's download, you need to yes, you you could uh, let it uh, leave it in your uh, download folder, but I really advise you uh, if you are uh, uh, intending to to work in Pure Data to create a folder uh, a specific folder for uh, objects. Uh, that's what I do when I create something, some piece of the. Of software composition, I don't know. Uh, I put it if I'm satisfied with it. I put it in my own uh, object folder. So uh, the way you do that, uh, so first of all, you need to create the folder uh, on your computer, of course, and then you go to search pad, search path. Sorry, and uh, as you can see, I already have this one. This uh, PD, I get a PD main folder and then a specific object folder. Uh, and uh, so, if you need to, once you have created it, you need to to click on this button and yes, select on your device uh, where where is the path so that uh, Pure Data knows when you write the when you create the object. Uh, he will uh, know uh, where to search it on your computer. And the uh, second uh, manda mandatory thing you need to do is to download and install the library ELS because uh, my sequencer uses objects from, uh, from this library too. So the way you do it is uh, pretty simple. You go here, find externals online and you simply type else and uh, you click on that and you you click on yes when he, when pure data asks you some things and and automatically it will create the search path so for libraries it uh, it does it automatically for specific patch you have to do it manually so yes once you've done that you can uh, by uh, pressing Control One, you can uh, write seg dot list. Uh, you need to provide the uh, uh, creation argument. I will talk more about that later. But let's say, for the for the purpose of this first introduction, I will simply put one. Um, so the way it works, you need what we call a toggle, which is uh, if you go out of edit mode, you click on that and it's, uh, it gives a, a one value and when you press it again, it gives a zero. So it's you, you can see that as a on-off button in that case, because yes, you could use toggle for other purposes, but uh, yes. So that's the first inlet. Second inlet is the BPM value. So in this case, you need a number box or any type of uh, number. And w where things uh, begin to be fun is the third inlet, which is where you put your sequence. So I give you really just a simple example. Uh, let me just do. Uh, no, I think I will do this in a simpler way. Uh, left outlet will be the output of the sequencer. But let's say, in order to write a sequence that is recognized by the object, you need first value of your sequence must be um, a time fraction. So, if I want a half time of the BPM which I uh, define uh, so you need to put one over two, for example. If you need, if you want to use one full beat, you would do one over one, 
So integer uh, integer numbers of bits. I don't know if it's the proper way to say that, but you need to provide a, a, an integer number over one. Yes, because uh, the way I I implemented the sequence uh, uh, requires to write everything in a fraction form, even uh, integer numbers. So yes, but let's go back to the one half, and then I'd write uh, one. Then same thing, but two, one half, three, one half, four. Okay, so now I connect and I click uh, on the message box so that the sequence is sent inside the sequencer. Uh, let's do 180. Well, yes, sorry, uh, 180 BPM. Oh, anyway, you can see the numbers are put out. So I could go a bit uh, slower, like I don't know, 100 BPM. Ah, yes. I explain why it isn't, didn't work uh, right away. Uh, because uh, there is a, a problem inside my sequencer. I combine this object sequencer from the library else and the object pattern. And yes, when I uh, designed the object, I, re I realized that uh, there is like some uh, I don't know if if I should say inconsistencies. It's maybe a bit uh, rude. Maybe I didn't under understand uh, something about these two objects. But what happens is uh, when I uh, click off f from the toggle, if I click on again, the pat the object pattern and sequencer uh, won't begin at the same place of the sequence. So each time there is a, an off message, uh, the sequence will be simply erased, deleted from uh, from the memory of the sequencer. So as I wrote here, um, when you you are, uh, if you want to compose, uh, change things, and so on and so forth, I would advise that your toggle, um, when it's uh, put uh, off. So when it gives a zero, you add a little delay and you send back your sequence. Uh, why this uh, problem is important is the pattern, the object pattern, is the one that will interpret the fraction. And sequencer is the object that will uh, understand, if I may say <laughs> this way, that will understand the rest of the values. So that's why it's important that they are uh, fully in sync. Otherwise, uh, the sequence will be messed up. So, just in, uh, for the sake of the demonstration, let's do it this way and connect the toggle. And now, as you can see, the sequence always restart from the beginning and uh, there is no problem. So that was a little introduction. The way I will organize uh, this tutori tutorial is, uh, in fact, I will simply compose a piece using, uh, using this object. Uh, because yes, I made uh, some tests to pres present things uh, like a real uh, tutorial, uh, speaking uh, about everything you can do with that. And uh, I think it's simpler to go right away into a practical uh, case. So I will compose a piece using that and uh, we'll see how many videos uh, it, will, uh, it will be needed to cover more or less everything you need to know. So thank you, thanks for watching and uh, see you the next time.